you know, they say spirits find a place that uh, uh, they were happiest in their life. I work here at the Historical Museum. I also work at the 1886 Crescent Hotel. I work at the Basin Park Hotel and I also uh, work at the Crescent Hotel. I had, uh, I had a reporter ask me the other day if I'd been around here all my life and I said, not yet, but I'm working on it. It was initially opened as a private hotel and you had to be invited by people to stay there. It was known as the most luxurious resort west of the Mississippi. So it was a private hotel, it was a public hotel, it was a girls school, and it was a cancer hospital. In 1908, the Crescent Hotel started what's called Crescent College. The Crescent College and Conservatory for Young Ladies opened in 1908 at the Crescent. They study things like art and music, uh, but they, they primarily uh, studied uh, domestic activities. It was a girls college during the winter time, and it was still a summer resort during the summer. So that's how uh, it maintained itself as a business. But for over 30 years, it was a girls college. It operated on and off um, with different accreditations. Most of the stores for good, I believe, in 1933 or 1934. 1923, the railroad owned the hotel. They came to Mr. Thompson, Dick Thompson, and said, we'll sell you the hotel, your lease is up, and we don't want to lease it to you anymore, we want to sell it to you for 100,000. Well, that was much more than it was worth, and Mr. Thompson knew that. And he never could get them down, so he just closed the place up, and uh, took all the things that he owned, that he had put into the hotel, like pianos and organs and stuff like that, and walked away from it. Um, Norman Baker purchased the Crescent in 1937 and converted it into his cancer hospital. And the gentleman who bought the hotel about 1937-38 as a cancer quack clinic. Uh, the Crescent Warrant was put in uh, when it was a uh, hospital for individuals who had cancer. He would take these organs out of people's bodies of course, they'd secretly all go off and bury them like nothing was happening. Here were the hearts, the livers, and things of all the people that were still in bottles in formaldehyde when they closed it down. They were still there. When people's cancer progressed, uh, oftentimes their mental state would, would degrade also. It is true that when individuals did progress, they moved the rooms into uh, what we now call the annex. Some people called it their pain asylum. Um, it was a spot where people, when they got a little too noisy, they didn't provide pain medication at the cancer hospital, they got moved over there. It only operated for 22 months because Norman Baker was indicted on mail fraud and he went away to the Leavenworth Penitentiary in 1940. The Norman Baker who ran that facility, unfortunately, he would, he would send letters and bills to the family to take care of the people that came to the hospital. Uh, and unfortunately, when some people had passed, he continued to send letters to the family. Uh, so he was still receiving money, even though the individuals had passed. So. Uh, they sent him to Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, to the penitentiary for uh, mail fraud. A little over 20 years later is when the hotel caught fire. Um, in 1967, I believe it was in March, during the off-season, there was a fire that broke out. It looked like one of these Mickey Mouse fires, you know, that you see that's, that's fake on TV. Some kind of a deal where everybody's running out. It just looked like somebody had said it. Uh, they don't know if it was something with wiring. Um, there's a few different theories. I think they probably put a bunch of papers in the fireplace and they hadn't cleaned the flu and that's what we kind of think started the fire. Uh, by the time somebody saw the flames, a lot of damage had been done. It had destroyed the South Pinter, Penthouse, the center tower of the hotel, and did some pretty major damage to the top three floors. The heirs didn't want to fix the Crescent Hotel. They wanted to sell it and have the money. Uh, the hotel is owned by a lady named Elise Rennick. Um, she and her husband Marty purchased the hotel 21 years ago. Uh, they purchased the Basin Park Hotel first and began restoration on it, and three months later they bought the Crescent and brought it back to its Victorian glory, really. Rebuilt the penthouses, and um, it's pretty much the way it was when it opened in the 1880s. We're uh, a 
America's Most Haunted Hotel. So there is some things that go on there. And Dr. Ellis was a physician here. He was a house physician at the hotel for about 20 years, a doctor here in Eureka Springs for 40 years. Um, people have smelled the very distinctive cherry pipe tobacco he used to smoke. Um, in the hallways of the Crescent, some folks have smelled it at the hospital where he used to do rounds. And um, some people have actually seen Dr. Ellis. He appears as a half-body apparition. People only see him from the waist up. So he kind of floats uh, through doors and floats off elevators. Michael, the stonemason, uh, who uh, fell to his death and landed uh, during the construction of the hotel in room 218, what was to become room 218. We would hear Michael, who likes the ladies, would sort of put pressure on the girls on the bed. They can feel their ankles held, or there's some pressure down on their chest, or, or whatnot. So I think of a, a mother, she was uh, actually uh, uh, from the Harrison area, and she stayed with her daughter, and they felt like she was being pressed and held down uh, on the bed. Uh, the biggest thing I ever saw was, I saw, without a doubt, a, a, an apparition, a, an orb, a ball of light that was about this big flying around in the lobby of the Crescent Hotel. And there, there must have been 15 of us watching this three-dimensional ball of light move and then move and then just take off. I've had unexplainable things happen. I've felt some things, smelled some things. I've smelled that Dr. Ellis's cherry pipe tobacco. And one time I saw something with my naked eye, which is pretty unusual. Um, but we have an old ice box down in the basement level where the morgue used to be. And I was opening the door of that ice box on a tour once and saw a white hand come out of there, which I gasped and uh, kind of went on with my tour. Um, but after the tour was over, I had two different ladies that weren't there together ask me if I saw the hand. So I guess I really did see something. Never saw any ghosts in there. It's marketing. Try to get people to come over and take the ghost tour.